This is the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast, session number 317. Tracy Kanan on humor to break trance. Welcome to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast with Jason Lynette, your professional resource for hypnosis training and outstanding business success. Here's your host, Jason Lynette. Welcome back to the program, and you are in for a fascinating conversation with Tracy Kanan, which some of you may not know Tracy, but then again, if you've been to the HypnoThoughts Live convention, you've likely met. And if you were there in August of 2019, that's the year that Dan Lornitis did the comedy stage hypnosis show at the conference, but then Tracy was the opening act as the dominatrix of ditties with a comedy music act, which was absolutely hilarious and loved every moment of it. I'm going to let a lot of this conversation stand for itself because Tracy introduces some of these themes from a place of genuine care, concern, and as I like to say, we help people. Though here's a few mindsets to have going into this. As we look at personal change, all personal change can often come down to a few simple questions. How do you feel now? How would you rather feel? What are those things you're doing now? What are those things that you would rather be doing? And once we have the answers to those four questions, you no longer can work with any specific issue, let's say, as the sort of bullet points, as the, the heading, the sort of surface structure of it. It's no longer about weight loss. It's no longer about a fear. It's no longer about grief or shame, as become some of the themes in this conversation here this week. It's instead the unique perspective of that individual client, what their story is, and how the process actually comes into the shape of things. So this is where the mistake would be. To hear themes of this conversation and go, I'm not in that world, I don't work on those things, which, well, neither am I, but here's the benefit that comes from this, to go inside of these stories and ask, what's going on? And I mean, get ready for the absolute most unique and gorgeous application of hypnotic utilization I have ever heard in 300 plus episodes of this program, to again, go inside of any specific issue, because what I want you to consider is of the markets and of the issues that you are the most interested in working on. There are subcategories inside of it, and even so, there are side categories that perhaps you did not know even existed. And again, this theme of see your client as they are and help them to get where they want to be. You're going to hear the passion, the, the care, the integrity behind Tracy's conversation in terms of what she does, in terms of, again, the themes of workshops, that she's now putting together presentations and arming people in terms of their own personal development, plus one of my favorite topics, that of bringing humor, both appropriate and at times inappropriate, into the process, and exactly where humor can become an incredible tool, as we've had several people on the podcast now bring about that theme. So listen with an open mind. This is an incredible conversation from a true worker in the industry. We're going to put the links so you can explore on your own over at worksmarthypnosis.com. While you're there too, check out Hypnotic Business Systems. If you have a specific market you're looking at going after, if you have specific ideas you'd like to explore in terms of creating a product, a program, or workshops within any community to learn the systems of how we attract an audience, how we start to put the program together, how we start to, again, customize to the people in front of us, these are those themes that are shared inside of Hypnotic Business Systems. It's the all-access pass to my hypnosis training library, specifically around getting clients and running your business, though as a free preview check out jasonwebinar.com. That's an on-demand workshop, six steps to a six-figure hypnosis income. Check that out at jasonwebinar.com. A big thank you to Tracy for coming on and sharing her world and sharing these stories. So here we go. Episode number 317, Tracy Kanan on humor to break trance. My first hypnosis introduction for me <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. I was on a swinger cruise. I was the entertainment as a comedian. And I was walking by one of the playrooms on the swinger cruise. And I heard this woman having orgasm after orgasm. And I'm like, I want that. How do I get that? And one of my friends says, well, I know this hypnotist. And that was my first experience being hypnotized was under the erotic hypnosis wing of hypnosis. Yeah, which then from there, what, what kind of led the journey after that then? My experience with that hypnotist was not what I thought it was going to be. It was very different. And so I just wanted to learn more about it. 
And so I started reading, I started taking classes. The trainer of this guy was offering a workshop. And so I went to that workshop. And then by chance, I bumped into somebody else near me who was doing hypnosis and was an NLP trainer. And so I started taking classes from both and just kind of adapting my own style from there. Yeah. Now, when you say when you say adapting like your own style, if you had to kind of go back into some of these methods and principles, then what what did that style kind of become then, would you say? Now, my style is very conversational. Mm-hmm. I can't, I occasionally do a formal induction, but a lot of the times I just do more of a waking induction and have them just ease into a trance using their words, their terms, their beliefs, their interests. Yeah. Could you kind of like walk us through like an example, not for necessarily doing it, but kind of describe that a little bit more then? Yeah, sure. So on the client, one of my favorite inductions, I was working with a client who came to me through a belly dance studio and I started asking her, you know, what does she enjoy as a hobby? And she's like, well, I really love tribal dance and I love to make my own costumes. I said, perfect. What are you here for? And she goes, well, I really need help with stress. And this whole thing with COVID has got me all stressed out. I said, perfect. All right, close your eyes, take a deep breath in. And then I started describing that we were going to go shopping that day and we were going to the most fantastic tribal costume store. It had every symbol, every pin, every piece of jewelry she could ever imagine and every fabric. And then from that, I started helping her construct her costume. I said, now you need something to protect yourself from COVID. So I want you to find a fabric to protect yourself from COVID and describe to me that fabric. Oh, well, it's definitely, you know, she went into whatever the fabric was. And so that whole induction was her making her costume to protect her from stress, to help relieve her anxious feelings and to help protect her from COVID and to make her a strong family member. And after doing this, uh, a couple months later, I got a picture. She had actually made the costume that was her induction. Nice. So it was very cool. Yeah. What, what I love about that is that, you know, so often when we start in hypnosis, there's the idea that it's going to be, I don't know if I can hypnotize somebody. I don't know if I know enough inductions, which just by learning a little bit more about the person by asking a few questions the process really does begin to write itself and then we're better customizing for that person in front of us. Exactly. And they go into trance faster because it's it's all in their language. And that's what I've used other inductions, but they're not my words. I've always found them to be awkward and they work, you know, when you're a new hypnotist, that's better than nothing. But now I really kind of get inside the head of my client and figure out what makes them tick, what gets them going, what will put them into trance really quick. And it's always what they're interested in. So that's what I work with. Yeah, I like what you said there about it felt, would you say staged? It felt as if it was someone else's words. It felt foreign to you as opposed to, again, here's a person in front of us. Let's do something that's going to be organic. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So then from that journey then, so first beginning to learn it, what was kind of the next step from there? The next step from there, I just started, I think it was actually going to HypnoThoughts. One of my two mentors said, go to HypnoThoughts. And he's like, it's really cheap. And, you know, it's got water box. And I was like, oh, okay. So I went and I was just blown away. And I think this was the second hypno thoughts. I was just blown away by what I had learned. And it's like, wow, I, I I think I can do this for a living Mm -hmm. because at the time I was doing stand up comedy and it was beating me up pretty bad. And my home life was a little rocky at the time. And so I was kind of like, all right, what do I do after comedy? And I thought, I'm like, I think this is it. And so I started going head in on all that. And then with my home life being rocky, it got a little bit rockier than I anticipated the following year. I ended up separated and then taking care of my mother full time. So things got delayed a little bit, but I kept going to hypno thoughts. I kept studying everything I could and then ended up at the Florida Institute of Hypnotherapy which is the state certified school in Florida. And I've completed their 500 hour program. And then I was like, you know what? Hypnotherapy is my thing. I really like hypnotherapy, but I have this strong background as a comedian performing for swingers, nudists, and the BDSM community. 
but there's really not a lot of resources for them to go to. So that's when I started putting together my practice of catering to that market because I understand those lifestyles more so than I think any other hypnotherapist or, or most hypnotherapists out there. And so that ended up being my my weird little niche, which is the swingers, nudists, and BDSMers. Although I do have some weight loss and smoking cessation clients, I, I really get fired up when I have a kinkster or somebody in, in the fetish the fetish world that has an interesting, unique issue. Yeah, which that's that's part of why I wanted to have you on. That here's where you've got you know two different businesses, as it were. We're really more than two with the comedy. Then on top of it but sort of more a mainstream hypnosis practice website and then the other. And everything, the the filter for this is that everything we're about to talk about, any kind of community, there are specific needs inside of that community and to be the person who can provide a solution for that. So looking at that, so first of all, how do you tend to divide that time out? How do you kind of build a lifestyle around that then, would you say? As far as... Would you say it's two separate businesses or what's kind of the background there? Well, it's it's one business. It's all wing mm-hmm. hypnosis. But then my kinky fetish swinger nudist division, I branded as Miss Hypnotips. However, nobody wants that on their credit card statement. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine why. <laughs> so it all goes under wings hypnosis. But um, then, then again, I'll leave out who this was. Someone the other day is like, I just got online with something like online hypnosis.com and then quickly realized that he spelled it wrong and no wonder he got it for seven bucks. <laughs> so my first thought is on the credit card statement, it's just like, oh, they spelled it wrong. Okay, just move on. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, yeah. So anyhow, so it's all wings hypnosis. And then on certain websites, I have the moniker Miss Hypnotits mm-hmm. for fairly obvious reasons once you see me in person. <laughs> and, and that's how it, uh, and actually I get a lot of business from those websites and, and you know, there's a lot of erotic hypnosis doms that, you know, there's a market for that where they're entertainment, they're not actually providing a service. But where I kind of am head and shoulders above the rest is that I got a guy who's really got some shame and guilt issues mm-hmm. and doesn't know how to deal with that in the real world. He wants to balance his kink or fetish with the real world and he can't. Yeah, so that's where I excel. Right. And that that's part of this conversation, too, of, you know, where others would kind of put things into a category of, quote, just for entertainment. You're actually working to produce a change. You're working to actually create some sort of resolution in someone's life. Right. Yeah. Was there a specific, you know, impulse to go, this is a need that's out there that drew you to that? Or what's kind of the story of realizing that here was a specific need? You know, I just, I, I love my, my freaky people. I love my swingers, my nudists and my kinksters and I get it. And it was just a natural fit. I, um, I wasn't looking for this. It kind of found me and I was happy here. So here's where I excel. And a lot of people come to me because the traditional therapy of course hasn't worked, but then they have this polyamorous family where it's husband, wife, and a boyfriend, and maybe a girlfriend, and they go to their regular therapist, he goes, well, that's what your problem is. And I'm like, "Mm, how can we make that better? So they they just have unique needs, like you said, that other, other people just don't understand. And then sometimes with the kink and the fetish, like I have one client who's an adult baby diaper lover that wanted to lose weight and kind of different. He was also looking for a mommy and he was, you know, hoping I would be his mommy. And I said, look, I would love to be your mommy, but I don't have enough time and you don't have enough money. So how about (laughs) your adoption agency? Let's get you adopted. And he's like, okay. And so I weave this whole session. He came, he asked if he could dress the part and I agreed. And so he shows up in a rather large onesie with a Sesame Street character on it. And I was like, cool. I said, I just want you to imagine you're in your crib, just watching that Sesame Street mobile go around. And I'm going to count from five to one. Five. Ah, ah, ah. (laughs) Four. Ah, ah. And I started doing the count. He's out by three. And, (laughs) And so in that session, I worked with him on losing weight by eating baby sized meals and drinking more water out of a bottle. 
and how important it was for him to lose weight because mommies want a baby that they can lift and hold and cuddle with. And he has to be the healthiest, best looking baby there. So he's picked first out of the adoption agency. And that was the whole session. So out there, but I love I love working with these people because it really taps me to be my highest and best creative self. That word creative, I'd share a conversation and I forget who this actually was about at the time, but it was this dialogue. And this is about the time I put the story on the program many years ago around stop practicing hypnosis in a bubble, which is to say, okay, you're at a conference, go to a workshop for something that you have no interest in, because chances are you might find this approach that you know may be entirely for something different, but then suddenly the question becomes, how do I modify that for this person who's in front of me? Mm-hmm. And there was this conversation about work that would also fit into that category, and someone goes, oh, I just don't do that, to which you know the recommendation was, well, go. Even if working with that specific clientele is not your interest, you're going to see a creative approach based upon kinesthetics based upon techniques that are actually validating something is going on. And it was a workshop, you know, of this nature. And as he, after the presentation, he goes, that's how I'm going to work with people for public speaking now. I get it. (laughs) Because he goes, it's not about the logic. It's not about the reason. Here is a genuine feeling. And what I really wanted to say after that story, Tracy, was ladies and gentlemen, utilization. Thank you. (laughs) So then is it mostly, would you say, word of mouth at this point in terms of those dialogues or how is it you're being found? I'm being found through a lot of the kink and fetish websites and then a lot of word of mouth, a lot of referral. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I I do some online advertising and social media type stuff, but most of it's just online referral. Yeah, yeah. So then is there, is there, I have to ask this though, is there much difference, let's say, you know, over with Wings Hypnosis, someone's reaching out to you for something, let's say that, you know, others could just label as more mainstream. Is there much different other than the content of the session? Is there much different in terms of the techniques, the approaches that you're using? Nope. All the same. Yeah. All the same. It's just the familiarity with their lifestyle. And a lot Mm -hmm. of times I'll get people that they don't find me through the kink and fetish websites. I had one guy find me, he was looking up adult hypnosis and found me. And then when he saw that I did cater towards swingers, nudists in the lifestyle, he's like, I knew you were the girl because nobody else has the balls to put that on your website. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much. And he says, I I have, you know, now that I know that you get that, I want to come to you because you'll understand me more than anybody else in the world. Mm -hmm. Although you mentioned that here was this guy that, you know, was coming in and he wasn't looking to, quote, resolve what others said this was the problem. You know, inside of that was confidence. Inside of that was was weight loss. Is that a typical route that, you know, here's what let's say is, you know, part of the lifestyle, but some of the changes they're looking to create are, you know, a little bit more standard, would you say? Correct. Yeah. So usually in the kinks and fetishes, when a kink or fetish is out of control or the guilt or the shame is out of control, there's an imbalance in their life. So it's finding what, how do we find that balance? What's, why are they compensating with this kink or fetish? What's, what's it hiding? What's it covering up? What? And so that's where I work that angle from is why is this out of control? Let's go back in your life. And then we repair whatever made that out of control. You know, why is wearing women's panties so amazing for you? Almost all the time, it's because they were abused and that was their way of feeling safe. You know, dad had a heavy hand and they were always safest in mommy's arms. And the only way to feel safer is to wear mommy's clothes. So different way of looking at it. So you're still dealing with mommy issues. A lot of times they're just a bit more severe. Yeah. So then in terms of guilt, in terms of shame, what are some of your approaches of helping with that? Again, all custom tailored. Oh, I'm trying to think of an example I could say on a podcast because I deal with some really different, different stuff. I had one fellow who liked to go to gay leather events, but when you look at him, he is just all American country boy. You would never, ever suspect this guy. And the guilt and shame came about, he always had to be the responsible one. And so It was talking to that responsible part of him. I think I did parts therapy on that one and have him talk talk to that responsible part and say, hey, look, you know what? You've done your job. 
you raised your boy. He's in his twenties now. It's okay. It's okay to have fun. And so I think I worked it that way. Yeah. It kind of depends. What's the most powerful way, you know, with hypnothoughts, you get to sample so many different, I guess, ways to help people. And so I'm really happy that I have about 50 to 60 modalities that I right. can get it out of versus, you know, a lot of my competitors are, are one trick ponies. They found their path and yay, it works for them. But everybody's so different. I, I can't believe that one method will work for everybody. Right. And, and that's something that I've, you know, from knowing you a number of years now, that's something I've really appreciated about, you know, the conversations we've had, the work that you've done that I'm going to draw a correlation here. The correlation is not about this other category, but it's more the theme but there were some who would do past life regression, but the catch is here's their one script for that. Yeah. And there's some in these worlds that have their one technique and that's the one thing that they do, which, you know, makes me think back to the story you shared earlier of, well, I had an expectation of what that process would be and it wasn't, but then the intention to keep going and learning more of this passion towards learning and really listening to the person in front of you you know, and just that customization. I, I wanted to chat a bit further too about some of the influence of comedy and where, where that comes into the work that you do. With comedy, I use a lot of my comedy to break trances because as I, I grow in my practice, you know, I started out seven years ago, I'm a hypnotist and now I'm an unhypnotist. <laughs> so <laughs> people are just believing their own shit and that has to stop. So <laughs> I, I use humor to to break trances a lot of the times that once I catch once I find the catch 22 that my client is in I use comedy to kind of gently point that out to them and it works it works for me I don't know that it works for everybody but to to use comedy to break the trance is very very powerful because now they're laughing at themselves they see where it is and now it's not painful it's just funny I love that as the intention there's a quick story here that She's in my office. She's telling all these horrible stories about this breakup where she thought the other guy was cheating, but it turned out, oh, no, he's been married for five years and lying to her. And, and here's all these stories around this. And what's helpful to the story is she's in the office to quit smoking. And here's all the reasons that things are going on right now. And the testimonial first, she goes, you got me to quit smoking with one sound effect, where the moment was I found little opening in the conversation to just drop in the state. But yeah, but you were smoking two packs a day before you met this asshole, right? And she goes, yeah. And I go, huh. <laughs> <laughs> so again, breaking unhypnosis, dehypnotizing, breaking that trance. Th this is a favorite conversation of, again, the use of, oh, let's go here, appropriate and or inappropriate humor uh, to, to break out of it. Would you say it's more situational or what tends to fit in terms of humor and comedy in these moments? It's very situational. I had a client and I, it's pretty graphic. She had an ex-husband that was kicking her when she was pregnant. Hmm. And yeah, tragic. I mean, and just the abuse, this was like one of the easier abusive situations. And I said, well, well, what came of that? And she says, well, that baby was born and he's fine, but he's the little girl I always wanted. He is so gay. And I went, oh, all right. So I went back through and I said, I want you to go ahead and, and thank your ex-husband for kicking you like he did because he kicked all the straight out of that baby. And now you have a beautiful baby girl. <laughs> and she started laughing over the whole thing. And she's like, thank you so much because she's been, you know, replaying this abuse scenario for 26 years. And now she looks back at that abuse and she's laughing because he literally did kick the straight out of her baby. And out of the three boys, she now has her baby girl. <laughs> See, I hear that story and I go to, and this is where from the outside perspective, someone hearing it would almost go, how dare you though? I go to a client that I'll make this extremely general for obvious reasons that, as she put it, discovered that the chance encounter she had when she was 17, she was pregnant, crossed the border, got at the time an illegal abortion. And that's why here she is in her late 60s. And that's why she could never have kids. 
And so much of the process, and this is again, one of these, oh, I'd like to feel more confident. Now that my husband's passed away, I'd like to feel that it's okay to go out to a movie by myself, to go to out to dinner by myself. And that's what came in. And this became the, oh, that's where we're going as part of the session work. And, and it was where I've had people hear the story that I'm sharing here and they go, you know, well, that was wrong. That shouldn't have happened. That's not what she was coming to me for see the client for who they are, help them to get where they want to be. Mm -hmm. Now, what's helpful to the story was we already had the ace in the hole that she had founded a nonprofit for foster care programs. And as she hit the epiphany herself, this was not my suggestion because I wasn't able to have one of my own. I was able to improve the live, lives of, you know, tens of thousands. Beautiful. So, so to see how, you know, we can bring the story somewhere and use the story as part of the process. Are, are there moments where you're choosing to either, let's say, hold that back, choosing to not go in that direction? Uh, sometimes. Now, mm -hmm. I, I, I should point out that I, this client had demonstrated a really good sense of humor and she was already able to laugh about some of her past so I don't. I can't say that I would have pulled that statement with anybody. With yeah. everybody, <laughs> I, th I think you've heard me in the room before use the catchphrase of "depending on the rapport in the room." <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. And I had another client the other day who, yeah, wasn't the right way to go with her. So I, I found a different approach. So it's, yeah. Sometimes I can be real funny with clients if they have that sense of humor, and other times they're just not going to make the connections that they need to make. So I find other ways to connect with them. And I think the quote is actually from Bobcat Goldthwait that there's nothing less funnier than asking funny people to explain funny things, uh, yes. <laughs> which is why I think he goes, I don't go on podcast and break down humor. That being <laughs> said, from your perspective, let's go there. What, what happens in someone's mind if we had to kind of chart through laughter? You know, for, and even if we can put it in hypnotic and conscious and subconscious or whatever models, What's happening in that moment of laughter that does produce a change, that does produce at least a foot in the door that the change is possible, would you say? Oh, the endorphins all kick in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my favorite saying is you can't be, wait, <laughs> I got my, I was like, you can't be erotic and neurotic at the same time, which- That's also a good quote though. <laughs> you, cannot be, you cannot be sad and happy at the same time. You have to pick one. Yeah. And so laughter is just a great way to break that trance that when they're in that throes of agony and you can find that one funny gem that they can take with them, that's the, the hit that they need. That's the one piece that they just weren't able to, to make for themselves. I did it actually just the other day with a client. Her ex had, had begun dating a less attractive woman and she was just livid over the whole thing. And I just looked at her and I smiled and I said, you know what? Not everybody can afford a Rolls Royce. Some people just need to afford once in a while. <laughs> and she just looked at me and she started laughing and she goes, I never looked at it like that. I go, he traded down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Doesn't mean you have to. No reflection on you. You're still a Rolls Royce. You know, he's just a bad buyer. <laughs> so it was fun. Which again, remembering our client is the person who's in front of us. So game on. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, my, uh, t tell me if this matches up too, that you know, I, I, the end of a joke is almost a bit of a surprise. The same way that a magic trick doesn't tend to go the expected route. So it's that element of surprise that becomes dissociative where suddenly we can look at something differently than we did before. I'm flashing, of course, to Hot Shots Part Due not two, with uh, Charlie Sheen. And what do you do? The elephant with three balls. You walk him and pitch to the rhino. <laughs> you know, we're, we're suddenly it becomes an entirely different context, which how did we go 317 episodes and not tell that joke? <laughs> you know, suddenly it's offensive at the beginning. It's like, oh, wait, they're playing baseball. You know, the same as my kids right now are obsessed with the two muffins in the oven. One says it's hot in here. The other one says, oh my God, a talking muffin. Which not necessarily to the point of a joke inside of a session, but how the pointed humoristic moment, you know, suddenly again, pulls out the experience where they look at the situation differently and they can't go back to the old way. Correct. That's it. Yeah. So I was curious to ask, because you also do, in addition to working with clients, you've taken a lot of these themes into different programs, into different workshops. I know you're doing one 
that's around, what was the name again? Something about eliminating the critic? Conquering the critic within. Nice. That came about, I've been taking dance lessons. And over the holidays, I did a holiday burlesque number with nine other women. And it was so interesting to hear them. Oh, I'm too skinny to be sexy. Oh, I'm so awful. I I look terrible and red. And I was just like, oh, I'm not going to listen to this. So I went ahead and put together the course that helps them do NLP. They examine their belief systems about love and relationships, money and wealth. And then the last one is body image. And I help them rework their suggestions, and then they will put together their own self-hypnosis tape on week six. Nice. So that is that course. And a lot of the people that were in my burlesque class are taking it, and I I was really happy. And then uh, we pulled in people from actually all over the country on that as well. I was very pleased. And it was also to help my my dance studio. They hit hard times, like every Mm -hmm. other dance studio with COVID. And so it was a nice way to offer something that wasn't a dance class that was empowering women and making them feel sexy and better about themselves. So it was a nice tie in. So it's a hybrid class. You can tune in online. And then I have people in the dance studio as well that participate. Yeah, which which looking at, I love the aspect that it's not just guiding them through an experience, you're teaching them how to do something where towards the end, correct me on this, they're, they're creating their own hypnotic program. Correct. Nice. Yep. Last week we did love and relationships. And what I did for their homework is rather than, you know, tell me your love story. I go, I want you to tell your love story as if it was a fairy tale. And a lot of these women like put hours into it and had castles and fairies (laughs) and they really put a lot into it. And they said, wow, it really opened their eyes on their views because I let the metaphoric mind speak as to what they viewed their relationship was into rather than falling into a trance and spewing the same old story that they tell everybody. Yeah. Are there any stories of coming out of this, of people who have, you know, taken big steps forward, people who have created changes this early in it? Yes. Yes, they have. And it was fascinating to hear the stories. And, you know, some of the stories had happy endings and some had horrible endings. But from that, they were able to pull their belief system, stuff that they learned along the way that, you know, sometimes it was not all men can be trusted. Other times it was, I'm not worthy. Nobody loves me. I hope I find true love one day. So it was interesting to hear the themes within the fairy tale. Yeah. Through. And then once we know what the bad themes are, then we can go ahead and re- reword it with NLP wording and make it empowering. So then as a, as a group workshop, is it just, let's say you're leading and they're listening or is it interactive with the members then? It's, it's a little of both. Yeah. I, see. I, I teach the lesson. I have them share their stories from the previous week. And then they, um, I kind of go over the views and beliefs that they can add. So I had like 50 beliefs on love and relationships. They could add to their story that if it hit, if I said the statement and they felt it in their body, they needed to write it down. And then we work on changing that statement into something empowering instead of disempowering. Excellent. Excellent. We got to give you the opportunity to uh, plug though, because there's a deadline coming up end of July, correct? Yes. Yeah. So tell us about that. Yes. I, <laughs> I was voted by the ASN Lifestyle Magazine Award Show, Best Comedian, Entertainer, Musician, for the lifestyle. And this is the swinging lifestyle, but it's actually more than that. It's actually the the swinging lifestyle and the porn industry. <laughs> so I have been, one of my comedy personas has catered exclusively to performing on swingers, nudists, and BDSM events. I've been on, I don't know, 15, 18 swinger cruises, and I've performed on probably 12 or 13 of them. And then I also do a lot of edutainment in the swinger world i put together a program am i allowed to say the bad words on the podcast go for it i love the title the title of it was before i realized facebook wouldn't advertise it is are we going to fuck or what.com and i have now i'm rebranding it to the upside down pineapple club <laughs> and that, that's a transition yeah <laughs> yeah so anyhow so that is the hybrid I'll, I'll talk more about that in a second but anyhow so i've been nominated for top Lifestyle Musician, Comedian, Entertainer by the ASN Lifestyle Award magazine. And previously, in another 
reincarnation of this. I was voted top female entertainer of the year, 2015, 16, 17, and 18. They forgot to do it in 19. Mm. Damn. And then COVID took 20. So come on, 2021. I want to back. <laughs> so you can vote for me. You can vote once a day based on your IP address through July 31st. Awesome. I'm sure we'll link to that in the show notes at worksmarthypnosis.com. What I love about this conversation, Tracy, is again, this, you know, we can look at a category and suddenly here's part of the audience that has a judgment, a criticism, but to actually have the conversation, we hear the passion inside of it. We hear the, you know, sort of the empathy of listening to someone and hearing, well, this is their world and this is what they need help with. And here's a way of going about doing it. And even inside of it, at the end of the day, some of it is just guilt. Some of it is shame. Some of it is, I'd feel better to be 10 pounds down. So in terms of moving forward with this, how, how would you recommend people get in contact with you? How can they best find you? They can find me at wingshypnosis.com, wings like an angel, W-I-N-G-S, hypnosis.com. They can also find me at misshypnotits.com. You can still find me at are we going to fuck or what dot com. <laughs> I don't think I have the other one running yet. And then as a comedian, the more widely known persona is the dominatrix of ditties. So dominatrix of ditties.com. Awesome. And uh, this has been fantastic having you on and absolutely loved being able to see you perform last year or last year in the before times. Whoa, 2019 and have no thoughts. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was great to see you perform and just loved every bit of it. Any final thoughts before we wrap it up? Golly, when you were saying about listening to me with judgment and that sort of thing, because you may not understand the swinging lifestyle or the fetish or kink lifestyle, as we always say, don't yuck on someone else's yum. <laughs> Jason Lynette here once again. And as always, thank you so much for interacting with this program, for interacting with our guest on the program too. Once again, you can check out all the links and details at Work Smart Hypnosis. Dot com. And while you're there, check out hypnoticbusinesssystems.com. You don't have to do it on your own. It's a program that's going to show you what to do, tell you how to do it, and brand new features give you some of the assets to get up and running. Check that out at hypnoticbusinesssystems.com. Though, again, a free preview and an exclusive online workshop. Head over to jasonwebinar.com for the free on-demand class, Six Steps to a Six-Figure Hypnosis Income. See you there. Make it rain. Thanks for listening to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast at WorkSmartHypnosis.com. Hey there, it's Jason, and I want you to be one of the first to find out as we upload amazing new content. So do this right now. Click the subscribe button right here on this video. That's going to link you to our YouTube channel here, and you will be the first to find out as new resources and downloads are made available. Do it now.